A half truth is a full lie. I'm going to make it make a lot of sense for you in a minute. Just stay with me. If you get caught lying in the courtroom, then no matter how good your testimony sounds, and, and no matter how influential your testimony might have been, it adds no value to the case. Why? Because it's a lie. That's right. uh, what are you saying, Christian? Uh, I believe this morning that somebody in this church's deliverance can be based off of somebody else's testimony. That's right. Yeah, I believe it can be based off of somebody else's testimony. Somebody say there's power in my testimony. There's power in my testimony. Yeah, there's power in your testimony. What's the power? The power is to set somebody else free. John 8.32 says this. It says, they shall know the truth, and the truth shall set them free free. One thing I found out that's very true is people will never get delivered from a lie. Amen. Yeah, that's people right. will never get delivered from a lie. Nobody gets set free from a lie. That being said, I'm about to make it make sense. People don't only need to hear about what God has brought you out of. That's right. But they also need to hear about some things you're still struggling with. That's right. Y'all quiet in this church, so I'm going to say it again. People don't only need to hear about how God has brought you out of some things, but they also need to hear about some things you're still in. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Because it's always good to know that I'm not the only one that's struggling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's always good to know that I'm not the only one that's struggling. See, the testimonies I grew up hearing, it sounded like this. I thank God for being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I thank God because God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. No shade to those testimonies. Those are great testimonies. God is good. But in my church, we ever rarely hear testimonies that say, listen, I, I thank God because in spite of me still having a marijuana problem. Yeah, yeah, and in spite of and in spite of me still being addicted to pornography, I'm gonna be real with y'all this morning. We never heard any of those type of testimonies. Why is it? Because it's much easier for me to tell you what God has brought me out of instead of saying, "Listen, I'm still jacked up." Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amen. That's Can right. I be real with y'all here this morning? Yeah. It, it, it's right. easy for me to tell you what God has has brought me out of instead of me saying, "Listen, I'm messed up, but God is still faithful." Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm jacked up, but God is still faithful. That's right. See, the reason we don't share these type of testimonies is because it's much easier for me to tell people what God delivered me out of Amen. instead of admitting I'm still jacked up. Yeah, Let's see who's on. Is anybody in this church a little jacked up still? Yeah, Amen. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm still jacked up. I still got some skeletons in my closet. So what we do is we share the good. That's right. But we Photoshop the bad. Amen. And, and we fail to realize this. Our bad news can help somebody else out. Yeah, our bad news can help somebody else out. Listen to me, listen to me. We all have issues. Yeah, that's right. It's possible to be called and still be flawed. That's right. I'm rhyming. It's possible to be called and right. still be flawed. Listen to me. You're not the only one that has bad days. You feel like cussing people out? Excuse me, sometimes so do I. You, you, you got an attitude problem sometimes, so do I. You, you don't always read your Bible. Guess what? I don't either. What am I trying to say? You are not the only one that goes through some things. That's right. I'm talking good. You're not the only one that goes through some things. It does not matter how long you've been saved. It does not matter how good you can shout and speak in tongues. That's right. You still got a spot in you that is messed up. That's right. Yeah, you still got... Issues. The Apostle Paul said it like this. He called it a thorn in his flesh. Amen. If you don't know who Paul is, I don't know if y'all read your Bible. I think you do, but if you don't know, <laughs> let me give you an introduction. Paul was this man who, 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 who always wasn't named Paul, right? Paul was this man that used to go by the name of Saul, and Saul, he persecuted the Christian church, right? That's he right. had many Christians murdered. He had them killed. And one day while Saul was on his way to do some devilish activity, he had an encounter with God. Can I take a side note right here for you? Because many times we have encounters and we think encounters are enough. Pause. It's not the encounter, it's the choice you make after the encounter. Yeah, that's right. that's Did you hear what I said? Yeah. The encounter with God is good, but after the encounter is over, you have to make a choice. So you come to church and you encounter God every Sunday, but after you that's walk right. out the door, what's the choice you made? Can I get to something? Lucifer had an encounter with God. Yes. Adam and Eve had an encounter with God. But that encounter wasn't good enough because an encounter without a choice is nothing. I'm preaching, preach Christian. Yes, you are. An encounter without a choice is nothing. You got to make a choice. Say, I got to make a choice. 
So this man named Paul, he has this encounter, uh, and, and after this encounter, he makes a choice to start serving God, right? And so Paul starts taking the gospel so serious that he gets beat up and thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. Paul, 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 he gets, he gets crucified and talked about for preaching the gospel. Paul is the man that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, right? But this man, this godly man, this man that is a ride or die for God says, listen, I got a thorn. I'm messed up. Yes. Are y'all following me? Amen. Uh, there's something that I got that, that I can't let go of. Let's look at it. Romans 7 verses 15 through 19. Romans 7 15 through 19. I'm giving you Bible. Is that okay? Amen. It, it says this. It says this. It says this. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but the sin living in me. I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. Here it is, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. But I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep Mm -hmm. uh, what Paul is trying to get us to understand is this. He has a problem that he can't get rid of. He's saved, sanctified, but he's still got a problem. He, he, he loves God. He truly loves God, but he has this thing that he can't get rid of. He keeps falling short in the same place. And what makes it even worse, y'all, is that he prayed to God for God to take it away. Y'all read your Bible. He prayed to God, and this is what God said. He said, no. Yeah, he, he said, no. Instead, God tells Paul that his grace is sufficient. Uh, but I like the way they put it in the New Living Translation because it says, this. it says, my grace is all you need. Can somebody say grace is all I need? Grace is all I need. Yeah, yeah, my grace is all I need. And the 